Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make this right here. So this is the finished scene we're going to be seeing how to make in the tutorial. You'll be learning every all of this step by step. The only thing I won't be doing is the materials and the lighting because that's really simple and you guys can totally go make it your own scene, make the materials and lighting how you want. I will be making this one here available in the description below for a dollar. So this is my original scene you can see here and um, if you guys want to pull it apart, see how I did things, use my materials, my shaders, it's fine. Um, so I will be making that available for anybody who wants to get that, you don't have to. So anyway, getting back into it, this is what we're going to be making. I think you guys are really going to like it. Um, it's been quite fun to make, so let's get into it. Okay, so for a brand new scene opened up in Blender 2.83, um, we're going to go ahead, just press A to select everything and X and delete. And by the way, if you guys look down here in the corner, you'll see I have my screencast keys enabled. So if there's any keys I press, you guys can see that. That should be quite helpful. So now we've emptied our scene. What we're going to do is go Shift A. We're going to go down Mesh Options here. And we're going to be adding in a circle. Okay, so then we're going to go hit one on a number pad to go to our front orthographic view. In our front orthographic view, we're going to go R, X, 9, 0, and hit enter. And we should now see it is rotated on the X 90. And then what we're going to do is go R, Z, 9, 0, and hit enter. So what's happening if we were in our front view now, we're going to see it is like that. So we're facing it from the side. Now that's really good. Now we need to do something very important. We need to go control A and then we need to apply the rotation because we've rotated it. And if you hit your N key, you come here to your items. You should see here under rotation that these three vectors are at zero, which is very important. Okay, now that's very good. So now we can go to our edit mode if that's selected and just go to your front view again and go G, X and just move it forward a bit. Then go to your modifiers tab, add a modifier and we're gonna be adding in a mirror modifier. And because we applied it, it's automatically now on the X. So if I disable that, you can see it's not mirrored. If you enable it, it is mirrored. So a few things we want to do here, just come to the clipping, enable clipping. So when we bring these two together, they will merge. And if we go now E, X, and we bring these vertices here, they're going to clip in the middle there, which is good. And then if we go Shift, Alt, and we click on here, we can go um, E, S, and scale it in. And if we go to, you, just hit the free key on your number pad to go into your um, right orthographic view. If you scale it here, you can see we're creating a hole. So we're going to bring it in to about here. This doesn't have to be exact because we can just scale the ball to match it. But I'm just going to go with that. And then I'm going to go E, X again and bring that in and it should automatically clip like it did previously. So we now have this. It's looking quite good. And what we got to do is just press A to select everything. And if you go G and X and you just move this, you can make it thicker or skinnier. So we're just going to go with this right here. So if you go to your front view, it shouldn't be too thick, but it shouldn't be too skinny. Um, it really helps with this animation not to make it too thick. So the thinner you can make it, the better, because the ball won't be intersecting as much with the mesh. So I'm going to just go with that. And you can use these grid bars, these grid cubes here as reference if you want to get it exactly like I'm doing it. And you can also look here under my item to see um, how I'm moving things here, if you guys want to be exact with this. But I'm going to go with something like this and just going back to the right orthographic view. And um, what we're going to do is just go into our wireframe view and deselect everything. And then we're going to hit B and just drag our box select here to select these vertices here. And if you go control plus on your number pad, you can grow the selection. So we're going to hit it twi twice or just once. So it grows the selection to these vertices here. And then if you go X, you can go delete vertices and now those guys there are missing, like that. So we go to our solid view, this is what we have. And then we're going to come here to our modifiers and just add in a few useful modifiers. So the first one I'm going to add is a bevel. And you can leave it at the default or you can play around with this setting here. But I'm just going to make it one, like that. And you can also come here to the limit method and make it angle. Okay, so maybe I need to come back to the offset here and just decrease that a bit. So make this whatever you want, it's personal preference. I'm going to go with 0 0.05 and I'm also going to set the segments to something like 3. That's very good. Now I can minimize this bevel and add in another modifier. This time it's going to be a subdivision surface modifier. You can minimize that. And then we're going to add in one more modifier and that is going to be a solidify modifier. And if we drag this slider here um, like so to about 0.11 meters, you can see it's quite thick. Maybe I'll go a little bit less. Okay, 0 0.06 meters on that, looks quite good. And if you come here now to your object, you can enable Shade Smooth. 
And you're gonna get this funny shading here. One way to fix that is to just come here and add one more modifier and that is an edge split. And now we have this, it looks quite awesome and it wasn't too hard to model. And if you click on here and you look under your transforms, like I said, under the rotation, all of these should be zero and also the location. Okay, so that is all good. We can now start modeling our little pendulum thing here. So what I'm gonna do is just go back to the right orthographic view by hitting free on the number pad. We're in our object mode here and I'm gonna go shift A, go to my mesh options, I'm gonna add in a UV sphere and then hit S and scale this guy down to here. So it fits in there. Then we're gonna tab into edit mode or just go manually here to edit mode. And then if you go shift alt and you click on any one of these loops here, you can select them and go shift D, right click to let go and then just Z, go into your wireframe. And of those vertices selected, just scale them down and make them quite small and go E, Z and just extrude this up. So keep moving it. Now, as far as knowing how far to bring this up, if you guys look here, you can see there's a grid here. So you can see here is a big cube then one more big cube and then another one and then there's a fourth one. So we're gonna take this all the way up to the fourth one. So go G, Z and just move that up to the fourth one there, like that. And now if we hit um, A to select all of these and then go G, Z, bring this all down to the pivot point of this um, object that we put in. So G, Z, just bring it down to here. So you can see there's a little orange dot there. That's where we wanna put it at as close as we can. And now if we tab out of edit mode and we're back in our object mode, we can go G, Z and just bring this guy up back to where it was. And go to your right orthographic view and just keep moving it. G, Z, just move it up. Just till it's in the middle like that. And now we can go object and shade smooth. And we can also add a modifier and add in a subdivision surface. There we have it. So that is gonna be our pendulum. You can see here if we swing it now, it's swinging around that pivot point and that's why we moved it as we did. Okay, so one more thing we can add in here is just our ground floor. So shift A, mesh, add in a plane. Go G, Z, just bring it down to here. And if you go into edit mode, go to your face select, edge select here. Just grab one of these edges, go double G and just slide the edge and go shift D, X. Move it back to here and then E, X, extrude. And then you can grab both of these here and go E, Y to extrude them out. Grab these two faces here and these two edges and then hit F to insert a face. And then you can do the exact same thing here. It doesn't have to be exact on both sides. Just extrude these out, select both of these holding in shift and then hit F and that's gonna fill in a face. Then if you hold in shift and alt and just select all of these um, edges on the outside and you go E, S and you just scale. We're gonna scale it out like so. You can also go E, S, just S, X to scale it out like this. Just a basic floor. And then we're gonna go Shift, Alt and just click on here to loop select this inner part and go E, Z and just extrude these guys down like so. Maybe just G, Z, bring them down a little bit more. Okay, there we have it. And now if we come here, we can add a modifier to this. We're gonna add in a bevel and we're just gonna make this angle and we're gonna bring the offset down quite a bit. Something like that. So that's 0 0.024. And you can come here to the segments and add in a few more seconds. And you can also now we have it selected, go object and just enable shade smooth. Okay, so what's happening here? So okay, if you ever get any of this funny stuff going on, just hit A to select all those vertices, go Alt N and just go recalculate outside. And that'll fix the normal issues. So tab out of edit mode. And now this is all looking good. This is pretty much our scene. Um, I'm gonna just come here at an angle like this. Just get a pose I like and go Shift A. I'm gonna add in a camera. And then with my camera selected here, I'm gonna go zero on my number pad. It's gonna tab into edit mode. Then I'm gonna go G on my keypad and then hit my middle mouse wheel and just pull back and zoom out like so. And I like to come to my camera settings, just make it an orthographic type camera. And then go to my output settings here and just make the Y value here 1920. And that's gonna give us this square aspect ratio. So you can go back to your camera and if you slide around this orthographic scale, you can zoom in or out. So get something you like, um, personal taste, it's all yours. Okay, so I'm gonna go with this. 
And what we're gonna do now next is come into our animation stuff. So we're gonna do some really basic animation and um, I think it's gonna be something like 140 frames long. So let's do that. Okay, so let's get into our animation. What we're gonna do first of all is make sure we go to our front orthographic view. So hit one on our number pad. And we're gonna grab this guy here, which is our um, rotating torus thingy. And we're gonna make sure under our transforms, so if you don't have that, just hit your N key and go to items, your rotation values all need to be zero. So all of these vectors here need to be at zero. And if they're not, just go control A and apply the rotation. So that's very important. And the same thing for this guy here, they should all be at zero. If they're not, go control A and just apply the rotation. Okay, so with that being done, we can now go to our keyframes here. We're gonna make the end value here 140. That simply means we're gonna start at frame one and we're gonna be ending at 140 frames. So it's gonna be 140 frames long at 24 frames a second. And then what we're gonna do is make sure we're on frame one. So drag this little slider to frame one, or you can come here and manually type in any value. So for example, if I type in five, it goes to frame five. If I come here and I um, hit one, it goes to frame one, okay? So on frame one, we're gonna grab this guy first, the little pendulum. And in our front orthographic view, so you can see here we're in our front orthographic view, we're gonna go R50 and hit, um, five, four, five, sorry, R45 and hit enter. So R45 and it's gonna rotate it here on the Y, 45 degrees. Or you can come here as well on the Y and just type in manually four, five. Okay, and with that done and we're in frame one, we can go I and insert a rotation key and then we're gonna to go to our halfway point. So half of 140 is 70. So we do need to do a little bit of math here. So go to frame 70. And then what we're gonna do is come to this Y value here. And we're gonna type in negative. So type in minus four, five and hit enter. And hovering over this Y value, hit the I key and that's gonna insert a keyframe. So we're gonna have this here. It's gonna to travel to here. And then simply to make it come back to where it was, we can come over here and click on this keyframe here, the first one and go shift. D and just slide this one to 140. And let's hover over here and just drag this up to give us a bit more real estate. And we're gonna just highlight all of these and just to make sure we're gonna hit our T key. So with all of these selected hovering over here, we're gonna hit T and we're just gonna make this Bezier. We're gonna make sure it's a Bezier curve. So we have this nice easing in and easing out on an animation curve and that's gonna make it look like a real pendulum. Okay. So that's done. Now let's get into this guy here. Very straightforward animation. So um, with this guy selected, go into frame one. And a quick little shortcut to go to frame one is just to go shift and hit your left arrow button. So in frame one, I'm gonna hit free my number pad to go into my right orthographic view. And in the right orthographic view on frame one, I'm gonna go I and I'm gonna insert a rotation key for this guy. And then we're gonna ask ourselves, what is a quarter of 140, which is gonna be 35. So let's drag this slider here to frame 35, or we can manually come here and type it in. And with that done, we're gonna go I, or not, not yet. So on frame 35, we wanna go R90 and hit enter. So you can see here on the X, it is now rotated negative 90 degrees on frame 35. And then we're gonna go I and insert a rotation key. Then we're gonna take this guy to 70, which is the halfway point. So drag this to 70. And on frame 70, we're gonna go R90 and hit enter. And then hit I to insert a rotation key here. And then we need to ask ourselves, okay, so what is 70 plus 35? Because we're going up incrementally on values of 35. So that's gonna be 105. So let's drag this slider now up to 105. And at 105, we're gonna go R90 and hit enter, and go I and insert a rotation key. And then one more time now, we're gonna drag the slider to our very end value. And at frame 140, we're gonna go R90 and hit enter, and hit I and insert a rota rotation key. Okay, so that's gonna be now a full 360 degree rotation. So if we go to our first frame here, and we hit play, we're gonna see this. And it comes back like so. And one thing we also wanna do is make sure we select this guy and, if, and just um, box select all of its um, little keyframes here and we're gonna hit T. And instead of making this one Bezier, we wanna make it linear. So it's gonna be no easing in and easing out. So if we play this now, we're gonna see this. Okay, that is really good. 
And what we should do as well, just to make it so we don't have an overlapping frame, select both of these, holding in shift. And so now both of their keyframes are visible here. We're just gonna drag here and select all of these keyframes and make sure we're on frame one with our little um, cursor thing here. And then go S and just scale it up a little bit so it all moves up one frame. So it's gonna be overlapping on frame 140. You don't have to do that. It's just a good little trick just to get rid of that one overlapping frame makes it look a little bit more seamless. Okay, so here is our animation. Um, and I do remember in my original example, I made a little decoration around here. So I'm just gonna quickly do that. So I'm gonna go Shift A, I'm just gonna come here to my mesh, add in a plane, and just go G, Z, bring it down about here. You don't have to do this, I'm just doing it. Scale it up, something like that. Tab into edit mode and then hit I to just inset that and then X and delete that face, and then A to select everything, and then X, I mean E, and then Z just to extrude it down. So I'm just doing this as a little side thing, you guys don't have to do this. And you can just go to your modifiers here and just add in a bevel, make the type angle, and just mess around with the setting here and make the bevel as big as you want. So I'm gonna make it that size, and then increase the segments here, and just go to object and give that a smooth shading. So yep. Yeah. This is what we have. You can also grab your camera, double tap R to rotate it. And here is a scene. So go ahead, go into your render settings, give this guy some fancy lighting, make some nice materials. You guys already know how to do all that stuff. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please consider subscribing. It really helps me a lot when you guys subscribe. Um, I am gonna be making this scene available on Gumroad for a dollar. That also includes a lot of the materials I made. So that's the original example you saw. I'll be making that available on Gumroad for a dollar if anybody wants to get that. So I'll see you guys next time for another tutorial. Thank <laughs> you.